He said, John is clinically dead. And I want permission to turn the machine off. You know, it's like when you're at home, but when you see it, and the tragedy of somebody dying in front of you, it does affect you. It's just so hard to be there. It's been tough. Unable to hold back his emotions, Jack Lowe breaks down while talking about the death of 19-year-old boxer Hamza Aljami, who died from injuries suffered at his show last weekend. This is a young man that died. Could have been my fighter. Could have been my son. You know, he's boxed. It, 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 you know, it could have been anybody that night. Aljami's opponent that night was Warren native Anthony Taylor, whom Lowe says is also devastated. Lowe says Taylor did get some encouraging news when he visited Aljami in the hospital. And he told Anthony, you know, my son would want you to continue on. I want you to continue on and, and you know, God bless you in your career. It was not your fault, kid. Maybe it's the most uh, bad uh, day was uh, in my career when I got the news that my opponent is dead. You know, it's in, in Russia. It, it uh, broke me as a for some time as a boxer. No, I didn't forget. Sure. But do you still? It's do you still think about it? Sure. Uh, when when I go <laughs> when I go to the ring in, in, in the fight or sparring, I make it. I think about that. I I can be there too. You know, it's it's very uncomfortable moment. Después, Marcos se sobaba la nariz. Después, la frente, ya acostado, su mano se volvió ingobernable. Síntoma de un pronóstico complicado. Ya en el hospital, la tomografía confirmó derrame cerebral. El doctor Javier Aguilar operó y espera que el cerebro se desinflame para abrigar un mejor camino para la salud. En el hospital acudieron tanto Julio César Chávez González, Omar Chávez y gente para apoyar a la familia de Nazaret. Y ojalá y, y pues. Salga bien en el muchacho. Yo no culpo a Omar, yo no culpo a Julio César Chávez, no culpo a la organización. Esto es un deporte. The 12th and final round.
Johnny lay in a coma on a life support machine for 46 days and nights until early November. We went down to the hospital where John was lying there. The neurosurgeon came in and he said, uh, I got bad news for him, Mr. Owens, he said. I said, what's that? He said, John is clinically dead. And I want permission to turn the machine off. was made only a few hours after Rome learned of his mother's death. He planned to use the $800 purse to help pay for her funeral. He just said, I want to make some money to help, which, you know, I took it as he wanted to help for the funeral expenses, whatever he could do. Because, you know, I mean, he wasn't a rich guy, wasn't poor, but Brad had pride, and that's one thing you can't buy. The reason he told me he took the fight, because his mother's never seen him fight. Now that she's dead, he said that he knew that she was seeing a fight. The fight, one of three fights on the undercard of a women's bout, started shortly after sundown. Most of the first round was uneventful. No significant blows were exchanged. And then, um, like 10 seconds left, we got, or five seconds left, we got tied up in my corner, on my side of the ring. And he had my left arm tied up like this, so I hit him with three right hands to the body. Into, into the ribs, you know. But it wasn't very hard, because when you're tied up, you can't get full torque in your shots. In the bell run, referee says break. I take um, three steps back, and Brass holding the ropes, just looking at, looking right at me. Kind of, about two seconds later, all of a sudden, look, he's fainting. I saw that his right leg was twitching, and uh, I realized pretty quickly that he was in trouble. I didn't know why. I couldn't figure out why, because nobody saw any punch. I hadn't seen it. And I asked other people, did I miss something? And uh, they said, no, he just collapsed. Two doctors at ringside tried to revive Roan. When their efforts failed, he was rushed to a local hospital, where he was soon pronounced dead. The presumed cause of death was cardiac arrest. He always told in boxing that, um, um, that you possibly can die or you can get hurt, but you just don't, you know, Never expect it's gonna to happen to you. Like you're invincible, nothing's gonna to happen to you, and, um, and nothing's gonna to happen to your opponent. But when you see it, and if the tragedy is something dying in front of you, it does affect you. Becky Zerlantis was in the Colorado Golden Gloves last Saturday in Denver when she was knocked down and unconscious by a right hand in the third round. The coroner's office said uh, has ruled that her death was uh, caused by blunt force trauma. You know, legally and properly, the referee can't stop this fight, but it's one day that uh, if there's any way possible, I would like to have saw the fight stop, but you can't when he's fighting back and he still is the champion. What it means, though, is that Levander Johnson is in all likelihood going to take six more minutes of the kind of punishment we've watched him take for ten rounds. Terrible, and that's not terrible. good. No, it's not good. He, he, he's going to fall by himself. Picking up on that conversation I was having with Emmanuel, in the recent history of the sport, when you look at fights where one fighter has been badly, sometimes permanently damaged, two constants seem to be part of the formula. Number one, the opponent who is doing all the damage is a hard hitter but not a big enough puncher to put the opponent away. That's Chavez in this fight. Number two, the guy who is getting worked over has his father in the corner as his trainer, constantly sending him back up to take more punishment. It's just a coincidence, we hope, that those two factors are right should be stopped. I would have stopped the fight between Right them. now, right yeah. now. Tony Weeks can stop at any time, and he does. Okay. Back up. Chavez still had energy going into the 11th round. After all that work, you got to give him credit. An 11th round TKO victory for Jesus Chavez, who owned the fight from the very beginning. Thank heaven. Referee Tony Weeks saw the reality and stopped the fight.
See the physical manifestations. Their faces become red. There's a cut on Mancini's ear. And then Kim's face has become a grotesque mask by that 13th round. This is the challenger. Duke, Duke Kim. You may not have heard of her before. You will remember her today. Win or lose. The 14th round, Ray came out. And he was determined this was going to be it. And he went right to Kim. They left hook and stun him. I hit him with another left hook and stun him. And I just threw right hand right down the middle. And I didn't want to see it. He went down. Referee Richard Green rightly stopped the fight. Nobody thought that Kim was badly hurt. I felt that he was, if anything, dehydrated. His head hit not 10 feet away from me, and his eyes are open. And I don't know if it was my imagination, but to me, I saw his pupils dilate. I was just so happy because it was such a grueling fight, and so happy that it was over. Nobody knew what was happening to Duke Kim. I prayed to God so that Kim would live. I really hoped to see him again. So his death was a huge shock to me. I wandered for a while. It took almost one year to feel somewhat easy on Kim's death. Kim was my best friend. I didn't go in there to hurt no one. I know. 